safety and taking back our country. From the Vogel Supporting Locals, we're here at the uh, rally Say No to GMOs uh, with the True Food Foundation. There's going to be uh, Heidi Osterman speaking, who is the president of the uh, True Food Foundation, as well as um, Percy Smyzer, who is the farmer who exposed Monsanto. Way to the Supreme Court of Canada. And you know what the judgment was? The judgment was that if those seeds get on your land, no matter how they get there, wind or pollen or combine or birds or bees or any other thing, then that, that crop and its profits belong to the biotech company, not the farmer. Is that fair? My hero, Percy Schmeiser. When uh, Monsanto contaminated us again, this time we took Monsanto to court for contamination cleanup costs, and that was a great victory not only for ourselves but for the world. Introduce GMOs, you no longer can have organic farming. It comes industrial farming. There is no such thing as coexistence. You cannot contain the wind, as was said, pull and flown in the wind, or by bees, and so on. In the end, you no longer have a choice and it all becomes uh, GMOs. No foods, you have a new bacteria, a new virus, and in the case of canola, you have an antibiotic resistant marker gene in that was never in your food before. Now, that's one type of GMO. The other type of GMOs is what we call the BT toxin GMOs, especially BT potatoes and BT corn. Uh, I would say that 80 to 90% of our corn now is BT, so by eating that corn, you're all also eating a toxin. So you now have three, four different toxins, vita, or, or, or viruses or bacteria in your food that you never had uh, before. The Human Rights Commission in Geneva, Switzerland under the United Nations in Canada has been charged for drastic violations of human rights because on the fact that we don't know what's in our food. We should have the right to know what we are eating what we are feeding our children and our grandchildren. We were one of them. Right now, there are two genes patented in breast cancer treatment. That treatment cannot be used unless a company in, in Salt Lake City, Utah, has paid a license fee. Uh, so, nothing. You, you know, GMOs don't only affect food for farmers, for seeds. It affects all of our society. Five cities in Canada have now adopted a safe food policy. Yeah. Tell us which are the foods with the crazy genes. Tell us, tell us, we want to buy old-fashioned beans. Hey, Osterman here from the uh, True Food Foundation with her rally, Say No to GMOs. On the, uh, the NDP. Uh, it seems like that they were more outspoken towards the, uh, the labeling. Their individual members have, you know, like Alex Adam Info is perfect for supporting the, the movement against the genetic engineering of food, but I don't know if that's a party platform we'd really have to ask them. I know the Conservatives and the Liberals, on the other hand, are completely supportive of the biotech technology, and uh, they're not the same at all. In fact, they, they defeated Bill 474, and now they've even crashed a moratorium on alfalfa. So uh, GM alfalfa may come, be coming in, and if that happens, it'll decimate the organic uh, dairy industry in Canada. It'll just it'll absolutely obliterate it. The ability is that it will be introduced, and then it's a perennial, and it uh, spreads very, very quickly, and it makes no sense to modify alfalfa because alfalfa doesn't require chemical inputs. It doesn't need any herbicides. 93% of the uh, alfalfa is grown without the use of chemical input. So why would you modify something that doesn't have a problem? So is that they're trying to introduce something that spreads like wildfire and that would take over the natural and organic alfalfa. And you can't recall 300 million seeds. So there we go. There goes one more crop. And that crop is the linchpin of the dairy industry. So without that, every certified organic grower is going to be out of business. We got Rose Stevens here. She's a volunteer with the uh, NHPPA, the National Health Product Protection Association. Starting to crash, they changed the title. Criminal. And maybe it wasn't that well chosen. We're not getting into that right now. But when we in the natural health industry have to label everything to the ninth degree. 
time and coming up. products Amber. such as Red Bull with aspartamine and Crest and Colgate. I, products I like that are getting to, NPN yeah, numbers opinion, and our products such as cinnamon and parsley well and are being refused NPN. I mean, this is absolutely things. absurd. It doesn't make any sense. And I have another question from our government so and all beyond, the leaders. I, I would like to why know say why, lady, why the radiation detectors have been shut beyond, off in Canada to measure radiation. I have many whistleblower scientists friends that are saying that there is as much radiation here on the west coast of California and Vancouver as there is in Fukushima. And, and they're not telling us this. Now I'd like to know why. Now apparently our health minister says there's not enough money to turn these, these uh, monitors on and perhaps it's because, um, you know, there's not that much radiation. Well, I find that quite absurd. I, I just, I don't believe that. I don't buy that. Especially when the people that I know and independent scientists are, scientists are telling us the exact opposite. So, thing, but then on the uh, other hand, I imagine maybe they don't have enough money because they're hiring thousands of inspectors to come and raid our health food stores and practitioners for those dangerous products such as, you know, parsley and uh, cinnamon, you know, the ones that don't have NPNs. I think there's some of the re uh, resolutions to this. What do you think people should start doing? Or to elect somebody who's going to listen to them and who has some common sense. Because this has absolutely gone stupid already. We need to suspend and review the natural health product regulations. They need to be reviewed because everything is, is, is totally wrong about it. And uh, GMO foods should be labeled. In fact, we shouldn't be having GMO foods. What kind of legacy are we going to leave behind for our children? It doesn't, I, you know, I just don't understand how politicians can go along with this. Don't they have children and grandchildren? Where does it stand now? What do they think they is going to happen? Court rule. Yeah, but they can try and take our communities back by electing your city council. Because Absolutely, that's why I support local supporting local. It starts, we need to start at a local level. We don't want their corporations here, and we don't want them spraying us with uh, geoengineering toxic aluminum. We want to be able to be self-sustainable in our own communities. It's start to stand up. That's why I love this slogan. When injustice becomes law, rebellion becomes our duty. What am I I don't really know. No one will tell me. I think it's GMO. You work with Heidi Osterman with the True Food Foundation. I'm the vice president. Okay, yeah. and now you're running. A, you're getting into politics. As of 48 hours ago, I'm the independent candidate for Okanagan Coquihalla. Okay. All right. And it's the food issue that we're going to put forward: food safety. And we're going to get savings from having healthy people living in a healthy environment and being somewhat educated with the help of government grants for deserving students. We're going to get that money from saving on Medicare. I'm all in, in favor of more European-style towns. I'm more in favor of uh, what you do and uh, market gardens uh, and small plot farming. Um, I'm all in favor of that and I don't want for food to travel. Yes. Yeah. rub their hands in People that care about food, good food at the end of the day. And it should not be labeled organic, it should be just labeled real food.